Awkward ending. It's so ironic to me that there's a huge sign behind him that says music. Hey everyone, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. I'm back with another episode for the Fix This Band series. I'm having a ton of fun doing these and a lot of people seem to be enjoying it. I know a lot of uh, comments are coming in. A lot of people are sending me, you know, suggestions for bands to cover. Uh, but this next band that I'm going to do is actually somebody I stumbled upon a while back. And it was a video called something like Worst Band in the World, Butcher's Pink Floyd. So I had to watch it and they were trying to play Comfortably Numb. And uh, it was, you know, kind of uncomfortable to tell you the truth. But when I clicked around, I found out that they also covered Cocaine. And I thought this might be the perfect song for us to cover in this series because a lot of beginner bands try this song out thinking it's going to be really easy. But they're usually in for a surprise because there's a lot of little tricky things in it. And I thought, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the video for you, first of all, of what they're doing. Then I'm going to talk about the typical suggestions that I would make for the bands that I worked with to improve this song. And then at the very end of this video... I'm gonna actually record a version with all my suggestions and show you what this could have sounded like. And by the way, this is gonna be the first video that I don't blur out any faces. That's because this band is already kind of famous. If you go on YouTube, they have millions and millions of views. So it's not like I'm exposing them to the world. They've already been out there for a while. Uh, and the band actually said that they wanted to improve. I saw a little interview on one of the uh, side thumbnails that I clicked on and the singer actually said, yeah, we're just looking to keep going to Get better. And, uh, it's a lot of fun, man. I'm so we can progress better and better. And, uh, so first, I'll show you some of the original video. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but you'll get the idea. So you could tell that the singer is a bit agitated. Uh, he's not really hiding his emotions on stage. It also seems like he's trying to cue people, uh, not very subtly. He's like, you know, staring at them, giving them the death stare and really trying to tell them this is where the chorus is. So he looks like a big dude. I wouldn't want him pissed off at me, but. <laughs> Awkward ending. It's so ironic to me that there's a huge sign behind him that says music. I just love that. The first time I saw this clip, I thought of that movie Sling Blade. If you guys have seen that scene where uh, Doyle, played by Dwight Yoakam, uh, who strangely looks like this singer, it's kind of weird, uh, is playing out on his balcony or his front porch area. <laughs> What I want to do is I want to simplify things, almost like Guitar Hero. You know, when you first start to play that game, if you played it before, they don't start you off playing really fast. You're actually playing very few of the notes. You're scaling it back. You're making it real basic at first so that you have something to build from. I would tell the drummer to start off with a strong four count. None of this, you know, hitting your sticks together and then sort of coming in when you hear the guitar start up. None of that stuff. It's got to be one, two, three. Four, I would also tell them to play it faster. It just drags on, you know, for a song with that name, it has to be a little bit more energetic. We would also simplify the beat because the actual beat is more like this. So I would have them do what I call the we will rock you beat. And that's just gonna be kick, kick, snare kick kick snare you know obviously with a hi-hat too but that beat seems to be very playable even for inexperienced drummers
Now, in the video of their live performance, the drummer was just floating along. He was not being the heartbeat of the band, which you have to be if you're the drummer. So at least by doing this simple beat consistently, the band has some sort of structure to follow. Now, when it comes to the guitar part, I would have both guitar players playing the rhythm together. One of the guitarists in the video, for some reason, he would just sort of stop and then come back. And then he played the lead sort of, and it was just really weak. We're gonna count it together. One and two and three and four and... That count is gonna haunt you for a long time because I'm gonna drill it into your minds. One and two and three and four and... No fancy stuff, no trills, nothing like that. Just those power chords. If you listen to the real version of the song, it changes almost every time. There's a guitar doing some high stuff like that. Another guitar is going... There's a lot of stuff going on in the Clapton version, at least. So the chorus of this tune is almost all on the upbeat. So it's almost all syncopated like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. The only hit that's on a downbeat is the very last hit. So instead I would have him just go like this after the main riff. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Let's talk about the bass line really quick. Let me switch. I was watching the bass player really closely and I noticed he was trying to play the guitar riff too much. But because the guitar players weren't even playing that correctly, he couldn't follow them. And so it just became a disaster. If you listen to the Clapton version, there's a segment where the bass player actually goes like this on the downbeats. It's really interesting. And I believe even a novice bass player could hold this down for the verses. And then of course, for the chorus, he could just do the downbeat hits with a guitar player. When it came to the solo section, there really wasn't one. He was just sort of noodling a little bit, I think in a pentatonic scale. And then he just sort of stops. It was really awkward. I would have him actually try to do the vocal line on the guitar instead. This is a really cool trick that I had a lot of my students do with a lot of success. So a lot of people could go like this. And then the chorus, he could move up to here. I would have him go. Then maybe a slide at the end like just to be fancy, I don't know. The singer is doing something that's a complete pet peeve to me. He's trying to read the lyrics as he's singing it, but he's not just looking at like a distant iPad or something like a lot of people do these days. He's holding a piece of paper. So I love the old school uh, aspect of this video and it's kind of crumpled up in his hand. He looks like he's trying to give a speech, but he's really nervous. So it just adds to the strangeness of this whole video. What I would do is I would teach him my lyric memorization trick, which I talked about in the last video, episode two, where you sort of tell yourself a story and you create these memory pegs for yourself. And usually all you have to do is remember one or two words and the rest of that line comes back to you because it's connected already in your head. So I would be in the band for the first couple rehearsals because I want them to have some sort of anchor, somebody who's already played the song a lot. And I would help them along, you know, I'd play the main riff with them and everything, but I would also try to help the singer with his timing. So I'd have to work really close with them to make sure he's coming in at the right time and singing the right phrases and the right rhythms. I would demand the band have at least three rehearsals before we play this live. And uh, I would make sure everybody is comfortable with their parts. They've been practicing on their own. When you get together, it's not practice, it's rehearsal. You're rehearsing what you already practiced. That's a huge thing to remember. And then the day of the show, if I had say over the production, I would bring in my own sound guy. I would make sure they sound good out front. And on stage, I would have them set their volumes a little bit better. You know, the bass seemed to be too loud. I couldn't really hear the guitar players. I would make sure everything's a little bit more balanced out. I wouldn't worry too much about their stage presence because uh, just the fact that he's not gonna be reading from a piece of paper and hopefully they're a little bit more into the music because it's gonna be grooving is gonna be enough for this show. In the future, when they're more comfortable and they're a little bit better at their instruments, I would say, okay, now maybe we can start moving around a little bit. We could loosen up, but that is not my concern at this point. What I did was I re-recorded the song. I kept his vocals. I tried to extract them. They sound a little bit weird because of the program I used. So we have the We Will Rock You beat. We have the simplified bass line. 
you know, that bass line. We have the guitar riffs that are close to the real thing, but more on the downbeat. We have the guitar solo that's actually the melody of the vocal line. Hopefully the singer worked on the phrasing and memorizing of the lyrics. And then live, we have the sound tech and we have all the volumes balanced on stage. Here's my best estimation of what I think it could have sounded like. Let's check it out. Wouldn't that have been awesome? Now that's still not super high level, but that's decent level enough to not have people throw food at you on stage. Now, some people might doubt that this band could get even to that level, but I've seen it happen in the past where people who were very inexperienced actually played music that was passable, at least for a, you know, a situation like this. It's not like they were playing at a concert hall or something. So that was a blast. I wish I could really work with the band, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, for now I'll just have to do it through video. But thank you everyone for watching. And the next one, we're going to actually showcase my old band when we were teenagers. I promised that for this one, but this excited me a little bit more for this one. So we'll catch you there. Okay. Bye-bye.